This video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you're confused about climbing shoes, then this video will clear a few things up. This ultimate guide to climbing shoes covers everything you need to know about choosing a climbing shoe, including how your shoe should fit, which shoes are best for different styles of climbing, and how to know when it's time to upgrade. Today, we are at Outside in Hellisage, and I'm here with James, who is the owner of Outside, Hello. who's gonna be talking us through how to pick the right climbing shoe for you. So I feel like the climbing shoe market can be fairly confusing. It's a complicated world out there. Very much so. So today we're going to help you do a bit of jargon busting on kind of climbing shoe characteristics, the things you might want to be looking out for if you're buying your first pair of climbing shoes, or perhaps you own a pair of climbing shoes, but you're hoping to upgrade them to something that's kind of better suited to you and what you need personally from a climbing shoe. I know there's generally maybe a bit of a myth that climbing shoes are supposed so, to be like super, absolutely. super tight. Nailed is it. that, yeah. would you agree or not? I, that's the thing I probably hate the most. People come in and go, oh, I've, never, I've heard they're meant to be tight. My dad tells me you get them 10 sizes <laughs> too small and you watch them cramming them in. Not at all, you're trying yeah. to enjoy climbing. You want to like it. You get a pair of shoes and your feet are not used to it and they're really tight. You're going to hate climbing, think this is awful. Yeah. So the best thing to do is get a pair that is Snug, they need to be snug, because if you're not hitting the end, you might as well be in your trainers, because they just flop off the end of the mm -hmm. hold. But not painful. You need to be able to put it on, realise you're filling all the voids of a shoe mm -hmm. without crushing anywhere. You don't sure. want hot spots. The toe box needs to be fitted, and you'll often see they're quite, some are really deep in the toe box, and that's quite an obvious okay. example that they've been built to fit tight. That's why you don't right. want to get a shoe like that, because if there's what you call a love bump, where obviously your knuckle should be up in it, that's because they expect your toe to be sort of like slightly knuckled. Okay. If you put your foot in there flat, there's going to be dead space above it. So mm -hmm. it'll be flopping around, you might roll off footholds. Whereas if you have a much flatter or lower profile, there's some that flatter than this, you can fill the whole void while still having your toes flat, which is often okay. comfier for longer. Something that crops up a lot when you kind of Google like beginner climbing shoe yep. articles is symmetrical versus asymmetrical yep. and shape, but it's not immediately obvious sometimes what, what that, that means. actually means. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So I guess we all sort of know what symmetrical means because they'd be mm. identical shoes. There wouldn't even be a left and a right. So what in reality that ends up meaning is that it's a lot more, the toe at least, is a lot more centralised. So if you came in and said, oh, I've got a much longer second toe, Right. You pretty much need an asymmetrical, a, a, a symmetrical boot yeah. because yeah, your, your toe would be sticking out longer than that one, Okay, if that makes sense. Oh, you might just find how it feels as well because I mean, a well-known um, designer of these shoes actually said to me recently, people worry too much about whether it fits their foot. You need to work out whether it works for you. Okay. So you might like your toes being knuckled like that. Other people might like them flat or just curled. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to know, but yeah, certainly when you're getting your first shoe, don't knuckle them. Don't yeah. probably get one that's so downturn like that, but also don't be afraid of getting a shoe that you might think, oh, I don't climb hard enough to have that. We all need the same level of help. And if you get a technical shoe that is comfy, there's no real problem with that. So another word that crops up quite a lot um, when I've been researching climbing shoes yep. is last. Yep. So do you think you could describe, well, explain what, yeah. what that means? Because I don't think I'm 100% sure. Well, I wish they wouldn't use that word as well. It's funny, okay. isn't it? Because basically <laughs> it is fit. So right. you could have a shoe with the same last and the fit is the same, but they might have a totally different rubber on it or a different okay. heel on it or different sort of, maybe even different tension in it. But the actual shape, because you know when they sort of make these things out of wood, you know, the, mm. the shape of um, a, a foot essentially to mould the shoe around, that would be the last. Right. So okay. if a, uh, a factory making these shoes lost a last, they basically lost that wooden bit of material ah. that they were actually moulding this okay. rubber around to make it fit. Oh. So if you know, oh, I'm a katana last or whatever, you could have the Velcro and the lace up and they would fit. The right. last, the shape would be the same, but they perform very differently from the soft okay. flat Velcro to a really stiff down to an aggressive mm -hmm. lace up shoe. I think heel is often just thought of as oh, I heel hook, I need a good heel. But the heel's so important for how the rest of the shoe performs. So if you're looking at your first shoe, what you'll find is you probably want to have a look at one with a quite straight heel at the back. Okay. The reason being, you could have, so this shoe is very comfortable because your heel's up, but it's actually got quite a technical toe. If this heel was pushed and cambered sort of in further, it would only 
not just sort of make the heel feel more secure for heel hooking. What it does is it pushes you into the toe. Right. So okay. that makes you stand on a small edge much better because you're getting forced forward. Sure. So often, you know, with the scarper instincts, they say like everyone thinks the low volume has a lower forefoot. It doesn't. It's got a scooped heel so it makes you fit further forward in the shoe. Right. Okay. So yeah, that can be hugely different to that in terms sure. of the scoop. But it's not just for heel hooking. It's also pushing you forward to the front of the shoe. Okay. So uh, for a beginner option, you'd probably tend towards or recommend going for something straight yeah, straight to rock. Yeah. Okay. Certainly if anything more than that feels uncomfortable. Before we get into the rest of the shoe guide, I wanted to have a quick word from the sponsor of this video, which is Squarespace. I have been working with Squarespace for the past year and a bit, but I've been using their services for a lot longer. So Nathan and I recently launched our merch business. We sell t-shirts and stickers over on hannahmorrisbouldering.com and Squarespace has honestly just made the whole experience of setting up a shop and dipping our toes into the world of commerce really easy. One thing that I really love about Squarespace is how customizable the checkout process is. So we can add a custom checkout form. We can add a subscribe option to a newsletter. We can also use Squarespace to market our products. So we can use their inbuilt marketing tools to offer sales and promotions. We can connect our social media platforms. If that sounds like something that you would be interested in, then head to squarespace.com forward slash Hannah Morris. And when you're ready to launch, use the unique code Hannah Morris for 10% off your first purchase of a website site or domain. What kind of different materials have we got going on with climbing shoes? What's the difference between yep. different uppers? Okay, so main, the main two out there really, I can't really think of any others, are synthetic or leather. Right. And so Evan sort of gets really held up on it. Um, leather is very traditional, of course, that's what they use in boots and things, because they're walking boots, because it goes soft and pliable mm -hmm. and, and moulds to your foot. Um, but also it's known to stretch quite a lot. And okay. also, you know, there's some ethical thoughts going into whether you want leather or not as well. Mm -hmm. Whereas synthetic, I mean, certainly a lot of the new synthetics like Lorica and things like that that Scarp use a lot can be really comfortable and sort of feel like leather and perform like leather, but without maybe that extra give. So you can mm -hmm. sort of rely on the boot keeping its shape better. Now, I definitely, we were talking about this before, we definitely don't agree that you leather stretch and synthetics don't. Okay. All stretch, all unstretch. Um, leather maybe a bit more, but not like, I don't think it's as big as everyone thinks. Um, okay. I remember well, it's inside a 510 box. I think he used to say, these shoes won't stretch. And everyone's like, yeah, but they stretch massively, <laughs> you know? Uh. So you do need to, you'll find out basically when you, further on in your career of climbing, you know, your first pair might stretch too much. It's not a big deal, don't worry. You're just getting into it. Yeah. You'll learn what works for you and what doesn't. And also, yeah, think about how tight you fit them. You get a really tight fitting shoe, you're going to stretch it a lot more than one that's loose. You've got no pressure on the front. It's not going to stretch, is it? Where if mm -hmm. you get them really snug, you're going to push them and they'll stretch more. Am I right in thinking that some types of rubber are better for different types of climbing? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So everyone wants, the dream shoe would be, wouldn't it, the stickiest thing in the world that never wears <laughs> Super out. Super glue shoe. Yeah. And so the, the, <laughs> The manufacturers have this constant problem between how sticky shall I make it versus how durable shall I make it. Right. Uh, so I thought I was thought it was really interesting. You know, video did before. Uh, if you haven't watched it, you should. Um, on rental shoe versus your pro shoes. Mm -hmm. Now we have already discussed that you had a very good rental shoe and had <laughs> really good it. rubber on it. So um, <laughs> that makes quite a big difference. But yeah, some rental shoes will use very durable hard rubber. Now, hard rubber is not sticky, but it lasts a long time. So your foot will be scrabbling right. on things and think, oh, I can't climb this. Put a good shoe on with good rubber and you suddenly you stick to it and you're climbing. Mm -hmm. and go, oh, wow. It does make a big difference. There's also this point that the rock or the what you're climbing on matters. So with gritstone or indoor bouldering and volumes and blobs and smears. Mm -hmm. You really want your shoe to stick to it the best you can. Uh, and if it softens because of that, then that's usually okay. Whereas particularly say peat limestone, tiny little edges on vertical walls, you want total edging power. Mm -hmm. Even if it was slippery, it probably wouldn't matter loads, but you want it to stick and keep its structure. So the particular obvious one is the Scarper Instinct now, probably one of our best selling shoes and certainly about my favorite shoe ever. a lot. Yeah, so everyone seems to love these, yeah. good fit. Um, now they look identical, the last, which you already know about, is the same, but right. the rubber is different. So they use excess edge on the orange one and excess grip on the blue one and basically that means out of the box it might feel the same but this might be stickier but it's not really why they've done it it ends up being softer 
because mm -hmm. it actually is more pliable and sort of will fill those voids in the volumes better. Whereas again, the peat limestone or whatever, you might want it to hold its edge a bit more and it stay stiffer and stick to the folds. But mm -hmm. then if you put a brand new pair of these and went indoor bowling, you might find it quite clumpy. You might not sure. get the sort of feedback and sort of forgiveness you need against a volume or a gritstone mm -hmm. smear or something. When I've been looking online, yep. you kind of have what appear to be the same shoe, except one is the low volume option. Is that what we've got going on here? Uh, no, actually, the volume <laughs> okay. these are the same. Well, well these are their third <laughs> shoe, yeah, yeah. So, um, right, the okay. volume of the shoe is often to do with, um, people think, oh, I've got a wide foot, they want a high volume shoe. Whereas volume is, uh, width is usually that, and volume is depth. Or like the right, whole okay. total of your mass, if you will, of your foot. So if you've got a bit, you might not be wide, but a really deep foot and it fills a, a big void, you mm -hmm. need a high volume. You could have a long, thin foot and you've got a low volume. So they usually low volume means you take less out of the, the top of the boot, skim less off it. Okay. Like I was explaining with this one, actually, the volume at the front's quite similar. They've just scooped the heel a bit more so you sit further forward in the boot okay. to take more volume out. They reckon there's like a weight cut off. So when you use a softer rubber, if you're say much lighter like yourself than me, you would find these maybe too clumpy and like you'd not okay. get any feedback and you just feel like bricks against the wall. Yeah. Um, but when you go sort of above 70, 80 sort of kilograms that I'm well into, um, I can sort of squish these too quickly for myself. Um, okay. And I need to get a bit more support and sort of hold me on the edge a bit better. If you're newer to the sport, I think it'd be fair to say that maybe your footwork might be Often a little it's a problem. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. heavier. Yep. Um, so I guess you might want your first pair of shoes, especially if you're just starting out and you're not sure if you're kind of like in it for the long haul. Yeah, yeah. Shoes Mega are expensive. Key. Yeah. Really so expensive, is there yeah. a kind of um, a good durable option, I suppose, or like um, advice that you would give for finding that balance of uh, something that, that works for you, but that's also going to kind of last longer than... Yeah, that is hard to get right because, like we said before, you could make a, a climbing shoe with a, a metal sole that would last forever. Yeah. It'd be great, but you couldn't climb a thing. Uh, so there is sort of, it's tricky to get it just right. And especially you don't want to get your first shoe by one of those rental ones we talked about where it doesn't stick to anything. So mm. just think you're rubbish when you're not. You do want to get something that's fairly durable. I wouldn't go straight in for super sticky, super downturn, yeah. thin. Uh, so you're just trashing, especially when around here, when you end up like not placing your foot as well, you might drag it up a wall, especially in the walls, it can wreck the toe here, before here. If you're climbing yeah. well, you wear your foot out there. If you're dragging it up, you end up wearing it out there. <laughs> um, Means Nathan behind the oh camera no. is climbing <laughs> very badly. Or fitting your shoes too tight, yeah. <laughs> And something else that you might see fairly often referred to as different types of closures. Yep. So could you briefly kind of go over what, what different Absolutely. types of closure are on the market? Well, I guess there's mainly three. We've only got two here. The other one's pretty obvious. So there's slipper that has nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as you can see, you just pull it on like a slipper. Velcro and lace up. Mm -hmm. Now they all offer certain advantages. Slipper is usually really popular for people like if they're plodding around and sort of warming up or training. They're not too worried about pulling on their heel. They're just often comfy shoes. Um, so people like them for that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you've got Velcro, which is obviously really quick. If you want to take your shoes on and off all the time, but have the best performance you can, then often people go for Velcro. Yeah. So it holds you in place, you don't get any movement, your heel stays put, but it's quick to do. The only downside is if you are really low volume or really skinny feet, um, then sometimes you just can't crank the boot up enough or have enough adjustability, I would say. And then you can go to lace up, where you can adjust every little area really. You can have it super mm -hmm. tight at the front and looser at the top. And sometimes you can even do it the other way around, but it does find that it holds your foot even more securely. I think the other thing to think about is what you're doing with it. You know, if I was bouldering, I would <laughs> probably try and usually have a Velcro shoe because um, I'm probably gonna take it on and off a lot. I'll yeah. try a problem, fall off, take them off because they're not that comfy. Yeah, mm -hmm. don't get them too tight, but they're not that comfy. Uh, whereas once you've got a lace up on you, generally in it for quite a long time, especially yeah. if it's a, uh, got a lot of lacing on it and you're yeah. going to do a multi-pitch you want to be in it all day so get it just right and leave it yeah. on so i suppose now we should get to trying some shoes yeah on and covering some kind of practical examples of um shoes that we might be looking at for that kind of like entry yep. level or um 
or next. Oh yeah, I guess yeah. kind of like upgrading your shoe from your your first couple of pairs. So we're gonna quickly go through a couple of questions that we had on the previous rental shoe video, specifically about shoes that people wanted to ask uh, you. One of them being, they're doing V3s and their 510 Anasazis, at what point should they change up their shoe level? I think the main thing that's obvious from that is like you don't get held up on a grade. So like, you know, you don't need to change because you're going from V3 to whatever. Mm -hmm. You need to get to the point where my shoe is the thing holding me back. If your heel's pinging off every time you're trying a problem, then yeah. maybe the heel isn't right for you, etc. If they've worn those shoes out and they're ready for a new pair, then definitely give it some real thought. What, what wasn't working for me? Is it because yeah. they're too flat that last? And if you are mainly indoor bouldering with the steep stuff, you know, Sazi's a very flat shoe. You might mm -hmm. want to get into that more clawing type shoe to pull you in on the overhangs. And that's quite a simple thing. This person has really flat feet and he's experienced that for him really highly downturned shoes are really really painful okay um can you get performance for, from something flatter yes you can look at some of the more maybe soft and sensitive downturned ones um i don't know if you want to see some examples yeah but if you've got i really example. like tenaya for that reason so yeah. things like ayati um Mastia, they always show you on the internet when you're looking at them this it looks super downturn because they've mm -hmm. like photoshopped in it. it looks like it's stood on a <laughs> pin or something like that but in reality when you put that flat i mean it's pretty flat yeah it might be a bit scooped in the arch as long as that's not too that's much for this completely. person then it's not a claw okay. that holds its shape like a total banana and these are actually some of the shoes that i find incredibly comfy yeah i climb well in them that's sort yeah. of perfect for me they might be a bit soft for a big guy like me on the on the edges but indoors you'll often find me in them or um on the grit or whatever because they are one of those shoes i was talking about earlier that if this ends up being your second shoe it might be magos's shoe for climbing 9b but it's also comfy it can be your second shoe easily you can yeah. do some vs's or whatever at stanage they've been climbing for about a year now and they're looking for a more aggressive shoe mm -hmm. their first option would be the squama model um could we explain why opt for that shoe possibly over other models like the Solutions? Okay, so I would say, firstly, be careful. You've been climbing a year. I mean, unless you've got really good, really quickly, which you might, and your feet be quite immune to this sort of pain. Mm -hmm. Both of these are fairly aggressive shoes. Like we talked about some that might forgive a bit more because of the softness. They're quite structured, quite solid. I mean, I suppose they even make beautiful shoes, but the whole point is that this doesn't forgive that much. It holds its shape. So just think about whether you want to go this far or whether you want to consider something like the Kubu, which I'll show you in a minute, which is okay. a great void filler. Um, but yes, the difference between these two is not huge, but it is quite significant. So, you know, we talked about last. Yeah. So for years, everyone's thought last Sportive was quite a skinny fit shoe. So okay. it's quite slim on, on here. And also it's way more symmetrical. You'll see the point is very much second toe. Yeah. So often that feels like you get sort of power point and really good edging mm -hmm. um whereas when they brought out squama it's quite a lot broader okay um and for the uk that's actually really significant thing we've sort of got wide forefoot and skinny heels in britain quite a lot okay. uh, and also with the the strap it means you haven't you can't take any of the excess volume there as you can with this one so again i'd say a slimmer foot and a bit broader and also this definitely feels a bit stiffer because it tensioned more and a slightly thicker right. sole definitely feels more edgy. This is definitely better for the paste and the smears. Okay. And both of the heels are fairly solid heels. Mm -hmm. So definitely worth mentioning while we were talking about this, the new one to the scene, the Solution Comp. Mm -hmm. Which then talking the difference between those two. <laughs> so we've got the same last, which we all know is now shape. Yeah. So much more symmetrical, but softer all round. So more forgiving, more paste and a slightly less aggressive heel. So it's not shooting into the front of the boot as much. It's not as insensitive and solid, yeah. a bit softer and more forgiving. And again, there's no right or wrong. Some people love this heel. Some people hated it. I'm not really sure what I want. I just want okay. to save some money. All right. And so I want a good all rounder. Okay. Something that has kind of like a good combination of everything. Yep. Um, so when you say an all rounder, yeah. are you an all round boulderer or an all round indoor I, climber? I'm an all round boulderer. Okay. Fine. Yeah, I've just yep, started no climbing up my local bouldering wall yep. and I, I've been getting on okay with their rental shoes, yep. but I want a pair of my own to save on rental costs cool. and I just want something that's like, yeah, a good all-round indoor bouldering shoe. If you were a customer who did describe yeah. that to me, I would absolutely go to things like Kubu, Ayati, yeah. things like that. Um, possibly even things like 
these uprises as well, which are really popular mm -hmm. because even though they're not as downturned because of the tacky rubber and the feel on them, great for toe yeah. hocking, they are a really good indoor outdoor all around really. Okay. Depending on how tight you fit them, whether they're going to be painful or not. Mm -hmm. Like we say, don't go too painful. It's not worth no. it. No. Yeah. Okay. You want to try some? Yes, please. Okay. And what size would you think you are? Which is always I a fun thing to ask because most people are wrong. <laughs> okay. Or 37, yeah. I guess. So I brought out some of the ones we were talking about that I think would hopefully be quite a good all-rounder for mm -hmm. someone of your sort of weight and size as well, because softer shoes I think will work better for what you've discussed. Yeah. So I think something like the Ayati here would be, sorry, this is the Oasi, the stiff one's called Ayati. Okay. Um, in a size four, mm -hmm. and that will probably come up bigger than a normal four does. The shoe fits. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like, it feels snug. Yep. Definitely not painful. Cool. But I can feel that my... You're still filling knuckles it, are quite like bunched up here okay but yeah it's definitely not sometimes you put on a pair of, or i put on a pair of shoes and it's like oh, i want to take those off straight away <laughs> whereas see I feel that's, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it feels like a good fit i'd say right. yeah it's often worth feeling how you know you can see how much volume is left here so you probably could go a bit smaller to get rid of this yeah whether it matters or not is uh, depending on how you feel in them it's also worth having a paste on the sort of grip tape there to see how much rubber you can get against it as well. And then a lot of people just put the heel around the side to see whether it's staying in place and give it a good pull. So I thought it'd be interesting to try these. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why I think it's interesting after you put them on your feet. Okay. That feels... Tighter, uh, looser mm -hmm. than the last one? More painful. It feels tighter, Okay. but less snug if that makes any sense like yep. it feels more rigid yep. and tighter like in here a little bit maybe more painful right but not necessarily a better tight fit yeah so what i thought was really interesting to see how you feel with that was this pair you put on you said oh that feels good i could maybe even go a bit smaller because mm -hmm. you know it wasn't too painful that's a uk4 mm -hmm. and that's a uk6 ah. it's two sizes bigger than this okay and you're saying that's more painful yeah so this is how you can't just go i'm a four i'll yeah. order a load of shoes online and try them yeah. on because you would have such yeah. a huge range of size i mean colossally different uh, yeah you i would just have can't do that you need to know four in those yeah. would be like you wouldn't get it on very I don't painful think you'd get it on. Yeah. yeah so i think that about rounds up everything nearly everything could go on forever a really, couldn't we? Yeah. Guide to picking your <laughs> first shoe as a beginner. I hope you found it informative and I hope that it helped to clear up a few questions that you might have had about picking the right shoe for you. Thank you very much to James for his time this evening. He's a font of climbing shoe knowledge, mm -hmm. it sort turns <laughs> out. I will leave all of the links to the individual shoes that we talked about that are stocked by outside in the description of this video so you can click through and have more of a look at the individual shoes if any of them took your fancy. But beyond that, yeah, I hope that answered a few of your questions and we will see you in my next one. Bye.